When 3D printing became available to mass audiences, it added a lot of capability to your average creator's hands to be able to recreate things that they would not otherwise be able to, myself included. I've used 3D printing a lot over the last couple of years, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it and talk about the perception versus the reality and lay out the problems I've had with these printers. Here, this, first off, let's show the fun stuff. This is a, a smart pistol that I made from uh, Cyberpunk. This is a file I found for free online uh, that somebody made uh, the parts and made it to where it splits apart uh, down the length uh, so that it would be easier to print and the magazine is stuck, but it can come out. It can slide out. Um, I don't want to break it, so I won't pull it out. I also used uh, free files to make this hammer. This is Sledge's hammer from Rainbow Six Siege. I'm looking at it on my monitor here uh, so I can see what you see. Uh, I printed it in black, then painted it silver, and uh, scratched the black that I put over it to make the silver shine through and make a nice weathered steel look. This is probably my most advanced thing I've created and it was the first prop I finished. I had to do a little bit of uh, work on this to get it closer to screen accurate. It is still missing the spikes along the top of the head. So uh, it's not 100% accurate, but it's very good. But let's talk about the printers. They can kind of be seen as this mystical creative silver bullet. And that is not what they are, at least not any of them I've used. I know that if I get anyone passionate about the, the subject in the, they might want to argue about like ease of use or something like that, but I want to approach it from the perception that I had and want to talk to you about my experience with 3D printers as a whole and how it has contributed to a creative experience. So one thing about printers is that they take more maintaining and more work to create good prints then they then people tend to acknowledge I'd say leveling uh, where you take a postcard and run it under the nozzle to make sure that there's equal tension or roundabout equal tension on each of the corners is very simple but it is difficult to execute. I will still occasionally have a nightmarish leveling session with my CR-10. Another thing is software. And like creature comforts are very expensive. Uh, auto mesh leveling is only now becoming a standard so that people expect. Uh, now with the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini and the A1, uh, that has brought uh, auto bed leveling uh, kind of to the forefront and brought it to a complete package where it is accessible and it is cost effective. That is much better than whenever I got into it, into the hobby in I don't remember when I got into the hobby. It's been a minute. Uh, but I started with an Ender 3 because that was the recommendation at the time. That was the learner's printer at the time. And what I'm working on right now is a, a Creality CR10. Same company, 
same software that runs it. It is just a scaled up Ender 3. It runs at the same speeds and everything. Uh, I got that used from a buddy of mine because he was having a hard time getting it to run. And, you know, I am just obsessive, I guess. <laughs> and I got it to run. Uh, and I've gotten some good prints off of it. But the machine doesn't hold your hand. There is nothing within it that makes the process easier while you are working with it. What we're going to do today here on Workshop Wednesday is we're going to go through these clips I recorded a while ago of me working on my two printers and talk about the experience of troubleshooting and going through the process of elimination and figuring out what's wrong with the printers and how to fix them and what the ultimate conclusion is today. I hope you all will join me. Thank you so much for watching on the front end. This is a mess. Let's start from the top. I can already hear you at your keyboard. Yes, this was recorded a haircut ago. I wish I worked faster too. Currently, I have like three different things going on. Uh, today, I got this printed. This is like a little Halloween decoration I made for myself. It came out pretty good. With the layer ironing, it came, it came pretty smooth. I, I brought down the layer height just to make it bring together, come together. I don't have a whole lot of room for uh, decorations and stuff. I don't have like just tons of space in the house, the apartment. I wanted to make some stuff for Halloween. I have some orange filament coming in tomorrow so I can make some little pumpkins to put around the place. And right now, since this is done, I uh, switched over to printing a, a filament roll because whenever I get... Shit. Huh? Whenever I get three kilogram rolls, they're, they're huge. And, you know, they, they stay bulky. It's cumbersome, and I want to be able to re-roll them onto uh, single kilogram spools, especially when they start to get low like this. Um, so I'm working on, I haven't picked out the spool roller setup that I want to print yet. I have just picked out the spool that I'm going to make. So uh, let's have a look at the printer and see how that's doing. When I say that this was an extensive process that was extremely time consuming and very tiring, I'm not kidding. I'm not even being hyperbolic whatsoever. I went through several rounds of testing and checking and looking on this. It would always get to a certain point like a certain amount of filament would go through the nozzle or it reach a certain height and it would quit. And I don't know why. I, I just did this over and over. I change a setting, then I do it again. I, I bought a dry box. It comes in before I start printing the orange filament that you see later. And let me pause. Look at that whole horrible print quality like let me grab myself you can see right here just look at all that that's supposed to be smooth right there like especially this far down on the print there's supposed to be no jagged edges and they are all over this thing this thing is a fucking disaster 3d printing has like it has its quirks. Like this printer is pretty solid. That one, eh. The, the major help between these two is that this one is direct drive. 
So because it's got a better extruder, it can run worse filament is really at least what it is for me at the moment. Um, Hindsight is 2020, but goddamn, I wish I was blind. All right, welcome to uh, my dining room table. My assistant is with me. Um, we're gonna remove these ports off this and uh, Henry asked me for like a full apartment tour. He's been like waiting on it. Um, I don't, I don't know about that, but hey, maybe you'll get one room at a time. <laughs> All right, you gotta move, bud. Why are you, what are you reaching for? Brother. I'm joined by my executive producer to uh, review this clip of me. Oh God, this is far too fast. So the one thing that went wrong with this print is that it's, uh, it's meant for a resin printing. And in this still here, stop. You destroyed this print. You can at least help me review the footage. So like when we look at it, it looks all right. But there's like burning and stuff. And it was quite fragile because this guy broke it. <laughs> this little chaotic guy was like, ooh, a skull. I'm going to use it for my spells. AKA throwing it on the floor violently. Ow, he bit me. Also, like... You know, I was very happy to get a, a successful print off the blue printer. Um, this was the last successful print off of that printer. And uh, the print quality was, I'd say, poor. And um, it, didn't, it didn't last long. I couldn't get all the supports off either. Can, can we have like a a sweet moment before we go to the next clip? And let's check on our spool. Let me see down here. How's it looking? Uh, still looks like shit. Look at that thing. It's ugly. It's textured. Let me get the other lens so I can really show it. So yeah, it still looks bad. Um. The texture on it, I honestly think it's the filament. It wasn't. Because this is the same printer that just put out that dragon skull. That print wasn't good either. You're in denial. Just let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. I know you can't hear me, but come on. You can't blame me for trying. Just, just give up. Just sell it. Just sell it. So what am I trying to say here? That you shouldn't try 3D printing? Absolutely not. I've had a solid amount of success printing. Let's have a look at some of the things that I've printed recently. Some that I use all the time. These are coasters I made. So I had been using these tiny little fake vinyl record things that I got off Amazon forever ago. They're not even vinyl, they're, they're plastic. A different type of plastic. But uh, I noticed they have a hole in the middle. So I 3D printed these little leaves that come together on a tree and each of the leaves you can pluck off and use as a coaster. This right here is what you saw me struggling to create earlier. It is a filament spool that I printed and a filament roller that I have broken, but that, that, that was me, <laughs> not the print. I made myself a hinging SD card case. It prints like that. You don't have to make two parts. 
This was one that I was very happy with. This is a, I made two of these. It is a mic handle for my DJI mic set so that I can use lapel mics as handheld mics if I need to hand one mic off to somebody and keep whoever I'm filming as the subject mic'd up like on their shirt. One roll of filament was going to cost as much as one of those handles because yeah it honestly that's pretty cheap for a like production gear accessory because how often are you breaking microphone handles that are full plastic you're not so you're not replacing them and buying them often hello Editor Canoe here. I explained this poorly, so I'm going to take a second to unwrap what I was yapping about right here. So while I was at PBS, I was uh, listening to a director talk to one of the broadcast engineers. And uh, the director asked why certain uh, like relatively small and seemingly insignificant pieces of gear cost so much what the engineer said was that these are very low volume products so the example here how many people are really going to want to spend three hundred dollars on a wireless lapel mic kit there there's a niche involved right and then from there, how many people are going to want a mic handle to use with this lapel mic? A mic that you would typically buy to uh, put on your shirt most of the time is why you'd get this mic kit. A much smaller group. So, you know, you might charge minimum 20 bucks a handle uh for the mic handles because you're not going to sell that many so this like one dollar piece of plastic that you're selling as a handle there's a lot of ex inflated expense involved versus since i've put the sweat equity into making my printers work and get or my one printer work I'm able to spend $25 on some nice filament and make two mic handles and still have a lot of material left over for other projects. That right there is great flexibility that is afforded to me just by having this and I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't know how to 3D model. Now I've not done it yet. Or uh, I not to print anyways. I've done some in Maya, just like video game stuff, but that was more of a learning exercise than anything years ago. I couldn't do it again. But being able to search up this mic kit on things.com, it's like a 3D model uh, search engine, and just type in DJI Mic 2 and see like a bunch of different mounts people have made for it already and these people have photos of the mic attached to these different mounts and stuff so you already know it's going to fit it's going to be compatible you don't have to wait for shipping or anything it might take you 10 hours or like you know like a work day to print it out but you push a button Assuming you have calibrated your printer well, you push a button, come back from work, it's done or almost done. And you use like a dollar, dollar and a half of filament and you can choose to make this uh, handle heavier or lighter, or thicker or thinner, however strong you need it. Anyways, that was my point. I rambled in explaining my point. 
but it's explained now. I guess. Fuck. If you were looking to get into 3D printing right now, I would not recommend either of the printers I have. The CR10, too old. It doesn't have any creature comforts. It It's loud. Like, it's very slow. It, it's just not good compared to other stuff in the price point. Uh, it was $200 on launch. <clears throat> it, it was like round about $200 new whenever uh, my friend Cody got it. If you got it, f honestly, at any price, um, whoever sold it to you, um, they took you for a ride. Honestly, if I were to suggest printers for people to start with today, I've, I've been watching a lot of videos on printers recently. I, I feel like you should just jump to like modern hardware. You should jump straight to like the uh, Bamboo Labs A1 Mini or A1. Uh, I think if you were starting, you didn't know if you wanted to do it, you didn't know if you're going to get any use out of it, just get the A1 by itself. It's like pretty cheap, honestly. It's comparable to the CR10 when it was new. It, it's tiny. It uh, Don't get me wrong, it's tiny. But it can do multi-material if you want to step it up later. And if you want to start printing bigger parts, get the Bamboo Labs A1 because that has a 256 by 256 build volume. So it's not, it's not one shot helmet size, but you can put off some pretty big helmet parts and like, and do it in quarters or whatever. And that would, that would work out. Like you could make full helmets on that. I, I honestly do. I do want to get the a one because that seems to be like my next logical step in terms of gear because I would like an X1 carbon it it seems to be the most universally agreed upon best printer at the moment people I that's a bold statement for me to make especially not as somebody who's known for 3d printing uh, online really what makes me say that the X1 is like the best printer on the market right now is Adam Savage. I was watching his YouTube channel tested and he compared it to a kitchen appliance. Said that it took care of so much for you and like made life easier. And that is what I've wanted the entire time. I don't want to know anything <laughs> about the printer. I want to know as little about 3D printers as I do about 2D paper printers. I, I want to be able to push the button and it runs. Maybe enough to where like I know how to Google to patch it back up. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you sticking around for this long of the video maybe consider leaving a like or subscribing uh, maybe I screwed up this video in some way and I missed some uh, just super important detail in my discussion about uh, 3D printers and what somebody coming into the hobby should get let me know in the comments I will I'll see it. Uh, whether or not I'll respond is purely based on how constructive it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. This video took a lot for me to make. Uh, I edited this three different times because I wanted to get this right. Um, I wanted it to be paced right and uh, wanted to be able to be proud of it. If you'd like to see some other things that I do, I also stream live on Twitch. Here's a clip from my one of my recent streams. Oh, this is the place that I thought 
had to be something. What is that? It's shaped like it's something. It's definitely something. I thought I'd... <laughs> what? Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye, y'all.